if you plan to go see Brother uh, Akers, he's in room 22A now. They've moved him. So at Stanton Town, he's in 22A. But let's remember the family in a very special way. This week will be the last week of dialysis, so unless God intervenes, uh, we just need to pray for God's perfect will. I want to thank the church once again for the nice card and the gift certificate. And uh, It is our privilege, believe me, to be here uh, serving in this pastor at this time of my ministry. I told my wife, I said, you know, looking back how we started and where we are now, uh, it's nice to be here. And God is good, and he's good all the time. Amen. Desire your prayers that we go into the word of God for a few moments. Got your attention, didn't I? Faithful, available, and teachable. We need to be faithful. We need to be available. And we have to be teachable. So it's good to be fat. Okay? First verse. Got a guy grinning there in the back. It says, The light of the eyes rejoices the heart, and a good report maketh the bones fat. Good reports maketh the bones fat. You know, uh, a good report sometimes is a testimony. We're made overcomers by two things. The word of our testimony and the blood of the Lamb. And I thank God for his blood, but I also thank God for good reports. When you, uh, as a child growing up, you know, you had report card days coming. And when you finally got those report cards and you had to take them home and your parents had to sign them, okay, uh, some of you brought back good memories for report card days, and other times it might be, oh no, what is going to happen? Uh, did you ever open it up and look at it and say, I may need to try to forge my parents' name on that. Not let them see it, okay? Well, God knows the thoughts and the intents of my heart. Amen? And I want to have a, a good report. And we we have to be ready to give an answer to every man. Good reports. Good reports. It's like balancing your checkbook. When you're, you know, it amazes me. I, I took accounting when I went to Idaho State University, and when I balance my checkbooks and when the receipts come in, Hank, it's very seldom I'm right to the penny. And I'm thinking, what gives? I can't believe that. So what I've done is I've created a cushion in my checkbook. I don't show it so that if I do not add properly, then I'm not going to be penalized. It's amazing. If you don't have enough money in your checking account and your checks bounce, not only do they bounce, every place where it bounces, they, they charge you $25 or $35. So if you're in the hole, they want to really make sure that you are in the hole. But we're serving a God today that hears and he answers prayer. All we have to do is be found faithful. Amen. Next slide, please. In Proverbs, the uh, first couple is going to be here in Proverbs. It says, a sound heart is the life of the flesh, but envy is the rottenness of the bones. Now, the first one talked about having a good report. Maketh the bones fat. But where there is envy, it is the rottenness of the bones. Paul said in one place, he said, I have learned to be content in whatever state I'm in. Now, it wasn't talking about the state of Virginia. Okay? It was talking about our physical state or our mental state where we are right now. Have you ever wanted something to the point where you would do anything to make it work? Now, in God's perfect will, if you need something, Brother Jerry, the God that I serve will see to it that I have it. Amen? He will meet and supply my every need according to his riches and glory. But if I begin to envy something, if I begin to covet something, if I begin to desire it above every other thing, you know you will make sacrifices that you didn't think were possible? You'll envy it. Your, your every waking moment will be considering, how do I make this thing happen? And it says, envy, rottenness, the bones. 
if your bones begin to get rotten, they're brittle. They'll break. They'll snap. It's your support. We have to find a place by God that we have that sound heart. Now, the first verse that I, I read, it talked about the light of the eyes rejoices the heart. One place in the Bible, in the New Testament, says, If thy eye be single, your body is full of light. Amen? If your eye be single, then the body is full of light. You know, anybody have ever had double vision? You know what I'm talking about? You see two things instead of one? We can't serve God and mammon at the same time. No man can have two masters. Our eyes have to be single. Next slide, please. A, a merry heart doeth good like a medicine, but a broken spirit drieth the bones. A lot of these scriptures are talking about the bones. Good report makes the bones fat. Envy will cause the, the bones to be rotten. And now here it says, a broken spirit drieth the bones. Have you ever been to a place where you just felt nothing was ever going right? Your spirit was broken? The devil will try to get you down. In, in Idaho, they had a place they called it the molly grubs. You get down in the molly grubs. You just uh, want to sit down, eat worms, and die. But we have to find a place by God that there is a merry heart, something that makes us happy. We, uh, it says here, it, it's, it's like a good medicine. You ever have what they call a belly laugh? You know what I'm talking about? I mean, it came way down deep inside. Sometimes it's because maybe the assistant pastor hit his head on the cabinet door. You know, Hank still talks about that. He raised up his head and hit that corner of that cabinet down there in Philadelphia. I mean, he, he, he popped it good. I did my best to act like I was really concerned. You know what, if, if, if I fell right now, David, I know you'd laugh. <laughs> he, he's laughing now, thinking about the possibility of it. But you know, it's that good medicine. There is fellowship inside these four walls. And we need to learn to take that good medicine outside these four walls. There is a hurting world out there. And they need to see the peace of God that passes understanding. It is amazing. I'll take my great-granddaughter Delilah with me when I go to the nursing home sometimes. And I can hardly walk down the hallway with holding her hand. And, and everybody, I mean everybody, the staff and the patients there, will say, look at that precious person. And they're not talking about me. They're talking about that little blue-eyed girl walking down the hallway. <laughs> and sometimes she'll say, Papa, I can run. And the way she goes running down. And there's smiles everywhere. Now, if I went running down the hallway, they'd probably be a little bit concerned. <laughs> I didn't hear it, and I'm not going to ask for it. We, 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 we serve a God that wants us as Christians to be a happy people. A good report maketh the bones fat. Envy will cause it to rotten. <coughs> a broken spirit will cause it to dry. You know the devil is out to rob you and I of the joy of our salvation? I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. We, we don't need to get up Sunday morning and say, oh, no, it's time to go to church. Help me, Lord, to get there. I'm supposed to come into his course of thanksgiving and praise. This is the day that the Lord hath made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Now, there'll be times it, it, it's, it's tough to swallow. We go through some hard times and suffering and, and heartache. <coughs> but I'm supposed to be glad and rejoice because it is a day that the Lord hath made. Next slide, Michael. Moreover, now here I get into the acronyms, F-A-T. It is required... Moreover, it's required in swords that a man be found faithful. You know, if we're not careful, we take things for granted. How many times do you get in your vehicle and even think, well, this thing crank over? I, I'm depending upon that truck of mine. I get in. 
But if you have an older model vehicle and you haven't really been taking care of it, you may need to have a prayer every time you try to turn the key over. Well, the Lord doesn't want us to be an older model that he does not know whether we're going to be found faithful. We are to be found faithful in the all things. There is a verse in the Bible that says confidence in an unfaithful man in time of trouble is like a broken tooth or a foot out of joint. We need to know it's dependable. We need to know, here am I, send me. We have to find a place by God that we, we look deep down inside of us and say, Lord, I want to be a good steward. I want to be found faithful in the all things. You know, if we're faithful over a few things, Michael, the Bible says, he will make his ruler over many. Just not a few, over many. The, the Lord moves in mysterious ways, his wonders to perform. We, we look round about us here today, and I see a lot of empty seats. When I pastored in Pennsylvania and took over the church that was there, everybody came out to see the new man. We had 29 people the first Sunday. And I thought, Lord, you do not send me here just for the 29. The second Sunday had about 23, I think. And I got behind the pulpit and I challenged the people. You know, I said, if we hit 75, I'll preach from the rooftop. Now, I'm afraid of heights. Brother Kenny, it wasn't long till we hit 75. And I got up on the ladder, got up on the rooftop, and Brother Jarrett was a short message. But God blessed. But it wasn't till another short time. You know, it used to be in the White Wing Messenger, if you had an average of 100 in Sunday or morning worship, your name would be there. We had a five Sunday month, and we had an average of 101. He can do it there. He can do it here. Amen? I want to look around about and look who is not here. I appreciate the card today and the... Uh, nice gift card for Olive Garden. But if you really want to show appreciation, invite someone to church. Bring them in out to the house of God. God intended for his house to be full. I, I, I think of the parable of, of the rich man that prepared abundantly, and yet there was room. And they brought in the halt, the withered, the blind, the lame. And they said, yet there is room. But before that, People all with one consent began to make excuse why they could not attend. One said, I just got five yoke of oxen, I needed to go prove them. Now, I don't know about you, but I wouldn't buy animals that I didn't know couldn't work. The other one says, I, I, I just bought a piece of ground and, and I need to go see it. Well, I wouldn't buy land that I hadn't seen. And the last one was the most pitiful. I just married me a wife and I pray thee have me excused. When I asked my wife to marry me, thank you, James. When I asked my wife to marry me, I said, before you say yes, if you're going to say yes, I said, I plan to pastor. I feel that God has called me into the ministry. And I said, and then pastors never owned a home, Brother Kenny. I said, well, probably never own a home. But I don't know, want you down the road telling me, I wish we had a home. She agreed to marry me. And you know what? God has blessed us with a nice home. You see, God will meet, supply all your needs, and give you the desires of your heart. He'll make good reports. And with the good reports of profound faithful, he will bless us. Next slide, please. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things, and I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of of my Lord. In today's Sunday school class, James was talking at, at different things, and I thought, Lord, you do bless faithfulness. He blesses faithfulness. And if I'm faithful over a few things, his word promises he's going to make me ruler over many things. And the many things I don't believe is just for my own personal benefit. He'll be able to meet and supply not only my needs, but I can be his hand extended. 
Good reports. Good reports. If we learn to say, Lord, here am I. What can I do? What do I need to do for you this very day? Next slide, please. Now, now we're getting into the availability. Now, therefore, perform the doing of it, that as they w was a readiness to will, so there may be a performance also out of that which ye have. For if there be first a willing mind, it is accepted according to that a man hath, and not according to that he hath not. We've got to be available. We've got to be willing. You know that God does not call you because of your ability? He'll call you because of your availability. There is a lot of people that have a lot of ability, but they're not using it for the Christ and the church. It doesn't do you any good to have a wallet full of money and you never spend it. You know that they have found people that lived on the street and died in poverty? I mean, living on the street. And Sister Betty, when they took their clothes and, and they looked, they had thousands of dollars in the linings of their clothes. What good does it have to have all that money and live in poverty? You know, we as Christians sometimes live so far beneath our ability, and God wants to bless us abundantly. If there be first a willing mind. You know, sometimes children, and we have to, this is getting almost into the teachability. But you ever have children say, Mommy or Daddy, will you teach me how to do this? And we don't take the time or the patience. You know, people do not, I want to say this carefully, a lot of people today do not know how to cook like Grandma used to cook. Grandma took the time. You might say, well, Grandma had all kind of time. Uh, I can remember going to Grandma Sedwick's house, my, my, my dad's parents, and no matter where we came, if they, if we could go unannounced. And Sister Betty, something either was going into the oven or coming out of the oven. Either way. Now, they knew we were coming. Lots of stuff was prepared. We can drop in unannounced. You know, the Lord will drop in on you unannounced and meet supply your needs. You ever, you ever go to uh, sometimes these stores that make their own bread? The grocery stores that make their own bread and that smells there? You know what you wind up doing, David? You can start going over it and gravitating to where that smell is. We need to find a spirit of God that when people pass by these doors, Sister Betty, they know something's cooking. Something is on the move. Amen? Next slide, please. And also I heard a voice of the Lord saying, Who shall I send, and who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I. Send me. Are you available to do what God would have you to do? we got people stepping up to the plate now, taking on Sunday school classes and different things, and and I thank God for each and every one of you. We need to find a place by God that when we say, Lord, who's going to do this? Stand in front of a mirror. Where his finger points, his hand will start to provide. I want to see some good reports. Uh, my wife started, uh, you know, these little kids back here, most of them have cell phones now. You know that? My wife began to question some of the kids and they gave them their cell phone numbers and she's starting to text them okay and saying hope you're having a good day and you know these kids are responding they're just thrilled to get messages we need to find a place by God that we let everyone know you are important and we have to have those good reports it says who who shall I send God does not call the frozen he calls the chosen. We need to warm up by the Spirit of God. We need to have His Spirit just radiate through us and bless us abundantly. Next slide, please. Those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do, and the God of peace shall be with you. T, teachable. You'd be surprised. You know, we had some fun here at my expense. You know, when I learned how to 
do certain things. Michael would say, fire. You know, the caveman finally got fire, you know. And, and it, it's amazing, the technology. I went to Walmart the other day, and I had to get a picture of my grandson, Alex. And James sent me something on uh, Messenger. And I went to the lady, and I said, can I get a picture of this? And she said, yes. All you have to do is, is have that sent to your gallery. And, and uh, I said, okay, here you go. It can be done. I didn't know how to do it. And at the time, I wasn't very teachable. And she said, oh, there you go. And it was nothing to her. You know, you'd be surprised if you take time to learn the word of God. Thy word have I hid in my heart. Why? That I might not sin against thee. We do not know sometimes what is good and bad. Holy Spirit will lead us and guide us into all truth. Amen? And that's what we need to learn to do. And it says that we have learned and received and heard and seen in me. We have to be the examples. We need to have people following in our footsteps as we follow Christ. Next slide, please. And the things which thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to do what? Teach others also. These young kids back here, you know, they're, they're sponges. You find, you find the ability to reach what they want to learn, and you teach them, and they in turn will teach others. A child, the Bible says, will lead the way. These little children, you know, they can go to their grandparents and say, I love you. Will you come to church with me sometime? Matt the other day was over at, I guess it was Jesse's, and they were doing karaoke or something. James sent me a, a thing, and he was just singing one of the church songs, Christian songs. And I thought, wow, just look at that. And see, that's a witness. That's an example. Is Matthew 100% great all the time? Probably not. Because I know his daddy. Okay? But I also know that we serve a God that hears and answers prayers. Children will make your day. A lady in Idaho says, love your children. When they're little, they step on your feet. When they're big, they step on your heart. That's how life is sometimes. But all for the grace of God the love of God that passes understanding. Michael, as I look upon my heavenly Father, he'll look down upon me and say, there's someone that can work for me. There's someone that can do good for me. And there's someone who tries my patience sometimes. But we serve a God that knows the thoughts, the intents of my heart. You know, if, if, if we judge people by the outside cover, shame on us. You never know what that person is going to be until they finally accept Christ. Let's go to the last slide now. And it says, And the Lord shall guide thee continually and satisfy thy soul in drought and make fat thy bones. He's going to be with us not just part of the time, continually. One writer said, Though I make my bed in hell, thou art there. We can't escape the presence of an almighty God. And he's going to satisfy my soul in drought during the hard times. And make fat thy bones. And thou shalt be like a watered garden and like a spring of water whose waters fell not. A constant supply of what we need. We don't have to worry about going into the cupboard and finding it bare. He is there to meet supply of that need. And they shall be of thee, and, and, and they that shall be of thee shall build in the old waste places, and thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations. And listen to this. And thou shalt be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of paths to dwell in. This is what we're going to be called. These are good reports. We're going to be called the repairer of the breach. I got tickled with my son. He has this saying, if it's broke, I'm going to try to fix it. I can't make it any more broker. It's already broke. So what will happen if I try to delve into it 
and see what will happen. I used that on one of my Halloween decorations. It wasn't lighting up. And I said, well, it's broke. So I tore it apart. That's why they have those little screws in there, Brother Tom, to separate it. And I looked at it, and it's electronic, and I thought, that's beyond me. I went in there and I shook it and it turned on. I said, okay, and I put the screws back on. My wife thought I was a genius. <laughs> you know what the Lord has to do sometimes to us? Just shake us just a little bit. In fact, when they gathered the wheat in the Old Testament times, it was a thrashing floor. And the wheat has this chaff around it. And they would sort of beat it. they thresh it. And then they'd take a pitchfork and throw it up in the air, you know, the wheat. And when the wind came along, the chaff would be blown away. And that which was good would fall. The Bible talks about in one place, the things which cannot be shaken shall remain. I want to remain faithful in Christ Jesus. I want to remain available in Christ Jesus. I want to remain teachable. Lord, teach me thy will. The disciples one time said, Lord, teach us to pray. Now, it's okay to say the Lord's Prayer, but he said pray in like manner. Our Father who art in heaven, recognize who God is. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Just not on Sunday morning we come out and, and, and hear the word of God, but Lord, daily bread. Help me to study to show myself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. You know, if, if I don't forgive you, I can't ask God to forgive me. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. That's how we need to pray. Good reports, thy will be done. And we shall be known as the restorer of paths to dwell in. In closing, I, I read a story quite some time ago, time ago, and it talked about a place that people, when they went time to pray, would leave their little huts. They were out in the jungles, and they would go out into the forest and pray. And the pastor had no problems knowing who was faithful in, in their prayers. Because when he visited their huts, he could see the paths going out into the jungle. But the ones that didn't have a good prayer life, Sister Betty, the weeds were growing up over the paths. See, sometimes we wonder, am I doing all that I can do? Prayer is such a strange thing. If we're not careful, we think unless we kneel down, we can't pray. I have prayed while I was driving my car or my truck. Now, I have my eyes open because it says watch and pray, <laughs> okay? Uh, but I've had my eyes open. I've been in Walmart shop shopping, and something crossed my mind. I said, oh, Lord, bless it. And it might have just been up in my mind, Brother Kenny, in the spirit of my heart. But God answers prayer in the morning. God answers prayer at evening time. We just need to keep our heart in tune. I want to find a place by God that I'm faithful, I'm available, and that I'm teachable. Amen. Shall we stand at this time? Give us a chance to come before the Lord in prayer. If you have a special need here this morning, this altar is open for each and every one of us. It's so good to have each and every one of you here. Let's trust God. Shall we all pray? Heavenly Father.